Hello everyone, welcome to tomorrow. There's quite a few things that we need to talk about in this video, including what we know a week later after SpaceX's rapid unplanned disassembly, and what else has been going on in spaceflight and the week ahead. This is your space pod for September 7th, 2016. So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you at least mildly care about space, or at the very least have a passing curiosity about what's going on with spaceflight right now. You also might have heard that SpaceX suffered an explosion at their launch pad in preparation to launch a satellite into space, and this was on September 1st of this year, 2016. But within the space industry, they don't like to call it an explosion or a catastrophic failure. They instead like to use terms like rapid unplanned disassembly or an anomaly. And the reason for this is that the space industry doesn't like to focus on the negative. If they did, I mean, they would just cancel the entire space program outright. But instead, they want to focus on the positive and foster a spirit of resilience to pick up the pieces and continue where they left off. That being said, we still don't know why SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket and the satellite that it was supposed to launch exploded. I mean, I mean, it had a rapid unplanned disassembly on September 1st. But they are getting a lot of positive support from the space industry. SpaceX and the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, are investigating why this accident occurred. And they're getting lots of support from NASA and the United States Air Force, who both, both groups have expressed that they have full confidence that SpaceX will be able to recover from this mishap and be able to continue in their operations. Although the destruction of the primary payload for this launch, the Amos 6 communications satellite, is tragic, it's not necessarily all bad news, and there was quite a lot hinging on the success of this satellite. Thankfully, the satellite was covered under an insurance policy, and there was two insurance policies, actually. One if the vehicle was destroyed during the launch itself, and another for any problems on the ground, such as being damaged while being transported from one place to another. So thankfully, there's that insurance policy. Another piece of good news is that SpaceX is going to be reimbursing the company that owned the satellite, which is not a Facebook, as the mainstream media has been reporting, but is actually an Israeli company called Spacecom. And the reason this launch was so important to Spacecom was because the Amos 6 satellite was supposed to replace the capacity of their aging Amos 2 satellite. And the success of this launch was part of the deal to sell the company Spacecom to a company called Jinwei technology group. But how is SpaceX going to be making it up to this company? They're either going to be offering a free ride on their Falcon 9 rocket or giving them 50 million dollars to uh, reimburse them for this mishap. Some people were worried that the deal was off to sell the company Spacecom to the Jinwei technology group because this launch was not successful. However, a representative from the company Spacecom told the website spacenews.com that they were in the process of renegotiating the deal with Jinwei technology group who still expressed interest in purchasing the company so good for them and meanwhile the rest of the space industry moves on and there's quite a few launches hopefully successful launches coming up and quite a few other space activities going on right now as well too many to talk about in this video now as far as SpaceX and their primary customer NASA are concerned the main payload that NASA wants SpaceX to deliver is cargo to the International Space Station. And we don't need to worry about the space station running out of supplies anytime soon. They have plenty of supplies and they plan for unexpected events like this. Plus there's two more cargo flights that are going to be launching very soon. One from Japan and another from the commercial company Orbital ATK who also sends cargo to the space station. So even if SpaceX doesn't return to flight for a while, they will not run out of supplies at the space station and things will be okay. Plus we also have our partner Russia who delivers four progress vehicles to the space station every year so they'll be okay. Speaking of the space station, three crew members actually returned home to Earth yesterday. This was astronaut Jeff Williams and the cosmonauts Alexey Ovchinin and Oleg Skripochka of Roscosmos and they landed in Kazakhstan yesterday around 2151 coordinated universal time. Also congratulations to Jeff Williams for breaking the American record for most amount of time in space, breaking Scott Kelly's record, although the Russians still have us beat by 
quite, quite a bit. Now there's some upcoming rocket launches that are going to be happening in quick succession. So come on board the hype train with me and let's talk about it. First off, in India, we have a GSLV Mark III rocket, which is supposed to be launching the INSAT 3DR geostationary weather satellite. So good luck, India. Good luck to ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. And I hope that goes off well. That's happening tomorrow, September 8th, somewhere around 1040 coordinated universal time. Next up in the United States, we have an Atlas V rocket, which is finally launching the OSIRIS-REx asteroid sample return mission. I'm super excited about this mission. And the rocket itself is launching in a really weird configuration. It's the 411 configuration of the Atlas V, which means it has a 4 meter payload fairing, one solid rocket booster, not very symmetric, and a single engine Centaur upper stage. And despite the weird rocket configuration, I'm really excited about this launch and this mission. Now, when it's launching, it's either going to be launching on Thursday or Friday, depending on where you live, and the launch window itself. The launch the launch window opens on 2305 Coordinated Universal Time on September 8th and closes at 105 Coordinated Universal Time September 9th. So good luck to United Launch Alliance and good luck to NASA. I hope this mission is a complete success. Next up in China, we have a Long March 2F rocket that will be launching sometime next week. Maybe. But the payload is going to be the Tiangong-2 space station module. And I'm really excited about this. Even though China is still in the early phases of their human spaceflight program, the Tiangong-2 module will help them to gain the experience that they need in order to fulfill their ambitions of creating a mere class space station, who they are trying very hard to reach out to the nations of the world to collaborate with them on that project. And I really hope that the United States is a part of that space station in the future, at least in some small way. But a rocket launch that's supposed to be happening next week that we have solid information about, unlike the information we get from China, is actually an Italian Vega rocket, which will be launching from Peru, French Guiana in South America, and it'll be launching five satellites. The Peru Sat-1, which is a reconnaissance satellite for the Peruvian government, and four Earth observation satellites called Skysat for Google and Terabella. The Vega rocket is scheduled to launch at 1.43 Coordinated Universal Time on September 16th. So good luck to Arion Space, and I hope that we see a lot more commercial launches like this. Now one more launch I wanted to talk about is also going to be happening on September 16th, somewhere between 1830 and 1844 Coordinated Universal Time. And this is going to be another Atlas V rocket, and it's going to be launching the Worldview 4 observation satellite for Digital Globe. And this Atlas V will be in the 401 configuration, which means a 4 meter payload fairing, no solid rocket rocket boosters and a single engine Centaur upper stage. So good luck again to United Launch Alliance. I hope both of these launches go off successfully. Now we're definitely going to be reporting on the outcome of these launches, most likely on our live show, which happens every Saturday at 1900 Coordinated Universal Time. So if you haven't checked us out live, you definitely should, but of course we post all of those live shows to our YouTube channel here afterwards. So I hope that you're watching those as well as these space pods. But I think I need to end this video here for now. So please tell me what you think about some of the topics I discussed today. And I, with the whole SpaceX thing, I mean, let's try not to speculate and make too many assumptions. I mean, here I go making an assumption, but for all we know, it could have been a freak accident that couldn't be replicated. I mean, we just don't know what happened yet. And as soon as we do, of course, we're going to talk about that and report it to you guys. But at least tell me what you think about this. And what do you think about the possible outcomes for Spacecom? And which of these launches, upcoming launches that I talked about, are you excited about the most. Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, I'd like to invite you to connect with me and the other hosts of Tomorrow on our social medias, our Facebook page, our Twitter, our subreddit, and our website, tomorrow.tv. And I can't end this video without thanking and mentioning our wonderful, wonderful patrons. This is an entirely crowdfunded show, and without these beautiful people, we would not be able to do this. And I am eternally grateful to each and every single one of you. Every penny helps to the creation of the show and making it it even better. And if you would like to support the show, if you're not already, please visit patreon.com slash spacepod. Thank you again for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark. Hopefully you know just a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.